sounds exciting. There it is. Hello everyone. I am live, pre-planned as well, not just spontaneous. Well done to me. <laughs> Talking today about uh, your party animal dogs. Your party animal dogs might be dogs who get really excited around other people or other dogs. They just love life. They might, in a cliched way, be a Labrador. They might be a Spaniel. <laughs> they might be similar. So if you're watching this and you can see this, uh, then let me know if you have any questions at all because I am here and I'm ready. All pre-planned, six o'clock, I'm live and I'm on time and my puppy is napping. I'm pretty impressed with this. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> it is literally just me at the minute. So I'm recording it anyway. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be talking today about um, the, the best way to create calm around your uh, party animal dog's triggers. And your trigger could be dogs, people, it could be um, traffic, it could be anything. We're gonna talk about creating calm and we're also gonna talk about what to do when things go wrong. Because we can all have the best laid plans, but sometimes things just go wrong. <laughs> sometimes life is a bit like that. Um, so as I'm going along, I am talking about party animal dogs, dogs who go wild, everything, dogs who just love life, dogs who might be excited by other people or other dogs. So I've had varying spectrums of excitement with, it, with the Whippets and with Womble, my Jack Russell. Womble was a bit high on life. He was like a party animal. He was like, life, life is good. I love it. Um, but for sometimes, for us, it's a bit much. And a lot of the time, we would rather our dogs were in a bit of a calmer frame of mind because these party animal dogs, they might be running up to other dogs, they might be jumping up at people. And in general, that's quite frustrating for us as much as it might be for everyone else around us. So there's loads of information that I could give you, but I'm gonna really try hard today not to be too long and too boring. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and stick to just 30 minutes. If you have any questions, there's places you can type, you can do like reacts and all sorts, and you're well, welcome to do that. So what are we gonna be talking about? First, we wanna be talking about creating calm around our dog's triggers. What do I mean by triggers, dogs, people, cars, anything, anything your dog loves. Often our party animal dogs, they find these things irresistible. They might be barking, they might be lunging, um, they might be generally just getting themselves overexcited. They might even stop taking food, which is always a really good indication they're a little wound up. So what do we want to be doing with these party animal dogs? We want to be creating better choices. We want them to be getting better choices around their triggers. So we want to be keeping an eye out for good behaviors. We want to make sure that we are not missing good behaviors because very often when we have dogs of any kind, whatever age, whatever breed, whatever the issue might be, uh, we tend to look for problems and not solutions. We tend to go, oh God, my dog pulls when they do this and they, they do this when they do that. Oh, my dog gets up and walks around during my life. Um, <laughs> I can see we're discovering things we shouldn't be, which I might have to interject with in one moment. He just decided now is the time to wake up. So it might be that they're doing all of these things and they're doing them on a live, but we can't just focus on the problem. We can't just focus on that problem. What we want to do, you pesky puppy, is we want to make sure, <laughs> that drawer's not even gonna close. We want to make sure, he just picked the moment, didn't they? We want to make sure that we see good uh, good behaviours and we reward them. We want to see good choices around these distractions. We want to make sure that they know that good choices pay. We want them to know that good decisions pay off, like not ransacking all of my items while I'm on a live. So what that, might that be for your party animal dog? That might be looking at you instead of looking at the distraction without being prompted. That might be walking on a loose lead around that distraction. That might be noticing the distraction and looking back to you. Good boy, because what we don't wanna do is ignore good behaviors when they are happening and then are surprised when our dog goes, this behavior isn't working, I'm gonna go and do something else. And then pay our call for being calm at the start of this. He's decided he's gonna go and do something else. Um, and it's infinitely more, I'm just gonna let him take this thing in a minute, I think. Do you want me to just get it out for you? No, okay. Dogs are good, aren't they? Some of you don't believe my dogs are as fun as yours, but they are. 
So we want to pay those good behaviours, we want to pay those good choices, we don't want to miss them. And yeah, with a puppy that might feel like we're paying them quite a lot, but it means that in the long run we have to pay them a lot less. Because once they have understood these behaviours, they are more likely to offer them and less likely to offer the problematic behaviours. A really big key part of that is we want to be at a point where a distance where our dogs can cope with their distraction. And I think that's a mistake that's often made is we wait until we're too close to the distraction or the thing that's happening and then the dog is too excited and we can't reward good choices because they're having a party. They're having a party with that person. They're having a great time. I mean, it, it, only in the dog's head. <laughs> the other person might not be as interested or the other dog. So we want to be sure we're making good choices at a distance where our dogs can cope. If our dogs are struggling to cope, then it's giving us lots of information that they might not be ready for that situation at the moment. Because if they're, if they're not responding to things you have trained, you know, you should always be training at home, you should be training engagement when there are no distractions. You can't take engagement too much for granted. You can't take engagement for granted. So just because there are no triggers around, you should still be rewarding engagement too. So you wanna have that engagement pre-prepared and then if, you're at the right kind of distance, your dog is still gonna pay attention to you. And then as time goes on, you're gonna be able to be closer and closer to that distraction. And just by rewarding your dog for noticing a distraction when they're party animals or disengaging from a distraction, you create a dog who's gonna to look to you when they see a distraction, assuming you're at the right kind of distance. Because um, I posted a video earlier and I will post it on the page later, I am at the point with Arkle, my five month old Whippet puppy, who used to be obsessed with people. Some of you have seen videos of him obsessed with people across the road. He now sees a person and he goes, where's my food? <laughs> and he looks at me. Oh my God, I don't have to say anything. I don't have to do anything. <laughs> I literally just have to pay him when he notices. And he's only five months old. So that's only taken two months since I probably started doing it, two months versus having to do all sorts of stuff to get his focus the rest of our life. I'm gonna pay him for noticing the distraction, not reacting, or if he reacts, for disengaging and looking back at me. He really threw me off there running around, so I'm not sure if I'm making any sense here. So comment if, I'm, uh, if you have any questions or if I'm making any sense. Thumbs up if I'm making some sort of sense, please, somebody. Um, so, we, we want to be rewarding good choices and I think that is something that's really often missed. You know, you watch TV, you watch anything, you watch some people training their dogs. Thank you for that like, <laughs> thank you for that thumbs up. Um, and it's also focused on the dog needs to know what they're doing wrong. The dog needs to know um, the, the behaviours they're doing wrong. But there's not enough talk of what are they doing when they're doing it right? Because dogs don't know right or wrong. They don't know what's right or wrong. Thank you for more thumbs up. <laughs> dogs don't know what's right or wrong. They don't have that concept. Dogs only know what works for them. And we are basically, with a super distracted party animal, teaching them that it works for them, there is value in paying attention to us, rather than being a party animal with that exciting thing that is going on. So we want to reward good choices. What else do we want to do? Being really good. I might stick to my time frame. <laughs> what else do we want to do? We want to do uh, something that I don't think people, um, and I'm guilty of it myself, do enough when we have overexcited dogs. And we want to think about taking them on purposeless, I nearly always say it wrong, purposeless walks. We want to be taking them out where there isn't sort of anything exciting going on. Um, I used to do this quite a lot with my uh, last dog, Arthur. We used to do loads of this where we just went somewhere, we sat down, he had a Kong, he had a licky mat. He could see loads of exciting things going on in the distance, not too close to distract him from the food, but enough of this uh, distance that he could notice them and he could carry on eating. And there we go. It wasn't very exciting, um, but he got the idea that these things going on while he was eating are no big deal. And <laughs> we very often go out with like a purpose. We get a practice lead walking, we're going to boost the confidence, we're going to go working on recall, and being outside is exciting, and that excitement level will lead to like party animal dogs being more excited. Just the whole idea of being outside being exciting um, is exciting. <laughs> um, and that's going to get the opposite reaction basically. I don't want, I, I like my dogs to enjoy walk, walks, 
but I don't like them to be mad as a hatter about them. You know, when I first got my Jack Russell, he was mad about walks. He'd clearly not been taken on one in years, and he thought they were the best thing ever. And it was so frustrating, because I mean, this dog would like pull and whine and bark at thin air, um, and it was crazy. Um, and we did loads of the right things, but it was only when we started to do purposeless walks that we actually got quite a lot of progress. Just go somewhere. You know, he was a bit reactive, so it was usually somewhere a little bit quiet or in an evening or we time it right. Um, we'd just I'd give him something to do because he was the kind of dog that, like most dogs, he wasn't great at settling. Um, give him something to do, kept him busy, his Kong, he loved a good Kong, lick him at, chew, a bone, whatever it might be that your dog enjoys. You just sit down with them, I'm afraid. You can take a mat or a towel <laughs> if it's the ground, or you can find a bench. Um, just let them take it all in because suddenly we're creating a different conditioned emotional response about walks. They're not just these hyper exciting events. Sometimes they're, they're good, but they're not Disneyland. Because the dog who's a party animal sees walks as like Disneyland. There's Disneyland and all the people and all the dogs are like the, the, um, the rides and the you know, attractions and stuff. They're like, oh, that looks like a good, oh, that looks like a good game. That looks like a good arcade. That looks like a good job. This is all brilliant. I'm having the best time. <laughs> Everything is like up here. But really, it's not, it's not Disneyland if you go every day, or it, should, it shouldn't be. So we want to sort of go, it's all right, it's just, it's just a walk. So you want to be taking them out somewhere. You, you know, if you're having problems with your dog's um, loose lead walking or their recall, you can take them out in the car if you drive. Take them out in the car, open a car door, or have them sit in the boot with you, with their chew, or find somewhere in, you know, an open area, like a, a supermarket car park, if that's suitable for you with everything going on, and just let them watch everything. You don't need to walk there. You don't need to go walk and stress yourself getting there if loose lead walking is a problem. You get them in the car, you get to the place, they get a con. This is also gonna help your travel in the car to be less exciting, because you're just parking up and having a con. Um, and it also makes the walks less interesting. I'm hoping that's making sense because I think a lot of the problem with these party animals is walks are a big deal and the things they see are a big deal. If we can take them to places, they can see things a little bit in the distance, but they're kept quite happy with something they really enjoy. Don't fob them off. <laughs> Don't fob them off with something you think they should enjoy. It should be something they really enjoy. And then there are things just going on in the background. And they're learning those things just going on in the background, whether you're, you know, um, let me have a think of somewhere, uh, whether you are going up to, uh, if you're in Lincoln, Wisby Nature Park, um, and you're parked at the car, somewhere quiet, and you're just sat with a car, um, when it's not costing you a lot of money, um, in the car park, um, somewhere else better, I'm sure someone could suggest, uh, and you can just sit there with their car, there'll be dogs milling around in the distance, there'll be people coming and going, it's not a big deal. Your dog's learning it's not that, it's not worth getting excited about. They're quite happy with what they got. Stand there, sit there for 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be long, then you leave. It really doesn't have to be long. People always say, I haven't got time, I haven't got time. Uh, take, take them out with you, you know, the nearest place you can. Uh, you can go for your walk after, maybe, if you want to, you know, even if it's somewhere quiet while you're working on something. You can divide your walk up however you like it. So we want to be, ideally, when our party animal dogs, trying to reward good choices when they happen, even when no triggers are around. In, in more importantly, when triggers are not around. We wanna be rewarding those good choices because that's what's gonna make them happen when the triggers are around. When the triggers are around, I wanna be really reinforcing my dog, rewarding them with good high quality treats. And it should be like the best of the best if you have quite a big, um, you know, a dog who's very distracted and excitable it's worth having a hierarchy of treats. I'm going off track again, but it's worth having this idea that at home you work for mm, okay stuff, but out on your walk, you get the chicken around people. You get the hot dog. You get the whatever your dog is okay with having foods. And along with that, maybe going out on purposeless, I feel like that's the right word. Someone will correct me. Um, purposeless walks, um, where the, things aren't a big deal because that is going to help your dog understand that walks are not the big deal they see them as. And I think that we don't do that enough with dogs, personally. Um, I probably know I don't do it enough with mine at the minute, which is why this is a good reminder for me as well. <laughs> we need to do more of that, um, because Arkel is nervous, he's on the other side of the spectrum, but he needs the same lessons. He needs to learn that things going on are not a big deal. They're not scary. 
and it just happens while he's happy chewing on his comb or his chew or whatever it is. <laughs> So give me some thumbs up, some likes, some somethings, if any of that has made sense so far. And then, as always, I've got my notes, which I will recheck um, <laughs> before I continue to the next part. As always, have any questions, just ask, just ask, I'm right here. I will be for another 15 minutes. Um, good, I'm getting some likes, thank you. Um, especially as my laptop's not working and I can't scroll down, come on laptop. Yeah, so I also said, I have to remind myself these things. I have brain fog and I'm gonna keep coming up to that one. Um, what do you do when it goes wrong? We can set our dogs up for success. We can think we're doing the absolute best thing in the world. You know, we can think I've got this nailed. I've got this routine absolutely sorted, but life happens. Let's say the woman comes running over going, oh my gosh, it's a puppy, as you're trying to keep your puppy engaged with you or someone lets their dog run over while you're trying to work on your dog, not running over to them. Like life is gonna happen. So what do you do when, that li when life happens and it goes wrong and your dog lunges at the person or rockets off on their long line after the other dog? Well, you, <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, it's gone wrong and you have to just sort of go, well, that's life sometimes. Um, there's nothing super exciting I can suggest you do in that moment because I think Again, we're, we're, we're over-focused. What do I do when it goes wrong? How do, I, how do I tell them that they've done wrong? Well, life has happened. Was it really them in those situations or was it things happening to them that other people caused? It's not your dog's fault that, that someone came over when they weren't ready to handle it. It's not your dog's fault that that dog came running off the lead, running straight at them while you were trying to work on them engaging. Handle it the best you can. Don't resort to shouting at your dog, getting cross with your dog. I know it's easier said than done, trust me. Um, try not to resort to getting annoyed with your dog because they don't know, they don't understand. They're doing their best. Dogs always do their best. It might not feel like it, but they are not doing anything to spite you. They're doing their best. So if they go wrong, they're, they're sorry, but that's just information. I've still not created my little sign that says behavior is information. I want to flash up all the time. You take a deep breath. You clench your teeth if you need to. And if you've got a dog on leave, you say, right, let's go. And you walk the other way. You don't apologize to that person. You don't talk to that person who's harassing your dog, sorry. You don't engage with them because they're harassing your dog and they're bothering you. Um, you owe no one an explanation when you're training your dogs. I think that's sometimes the biggest problem we have as owners is we're a bit like, what do I say to the person? What do I say to the dog? They don't live with you and your dog. Just say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going. It doesn't matter. I know that's easier said than done because I used to worry about that kind of thing quite a lot. Um, but it's not a big deal. If, if they're still quite wound up after the situation, you know, you've removed them or you've removed yourselves or you've got away from the other dog, your dog's still quite high as a kite, get yourself a handful of those tasty treats and you scatter them like a big space like this, scatter them all around. Because there are some dogs that will be high on, on an overexciting party animal experience for quite some time. And it's just because that maybe that individual's dog is struggling a little bit still with um, arousal control, controlling their emotional regulation. Um, and we just need to help them. They're saying, oh my God, I can't think anymore. <laughs> my brain, I know I say this a lot and it's not scientific. Sorry to those that are watching that might be more scientific. My brain's falling out of my head. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Right, okay, find it. Why do I like find it? Why do I keep suggesting find it? Cause some of you are like, what are you on about? This is, I'm feeding, I'm feeding my dog for doing something wrong. Is what I get told a lot. We've moved on from that situation. Dogs live in the moment. I am saying here's a handful of food to find. It's free food. Um, it's on the ground. You're going to have to sniff it out a little bit though. And sniffing is calming. Sniffing is relaxing. Even for spaniels, it's calming. Cause I know they go a little bit faster than the whippets. I know they're like, yes, I have consumed all the food. What is next? If you need to scatter another handful, scatter another handful. Because what you should find after that handful of food, if you've been training really hard, is that your dog looks back to you and goes, oh, is it time for us to re-engage again? You go, yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Reward that, carry on my walk. Um, but if I'm chucking a load of food down um, and my dog's then still going, where, where did the thing go? Again, I'm probably uh, generalizing a bit, but it's fine. Where, where did the thing go? Where's it gone? Or even Carlos, you know, what, 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 what happened? Okay, another handful of food. We might stand here for a few minutes because I'm not gonna take you anywhere in a high frame of mind. And I've been there because Arthur was a high as a kite kind of dog. He would get fixated, he could not move on, and once he could not move on, he would physically not move. <laughs> um, so 
Who been there? And I stood there once for a few minutes. Cut your food down. You're all going, Zara, my dog's going to get fat. I can't feed him that much. He's going to get an upset stomach. Well, you need to make sure you're taking out good quality treats. Bits of chicken. The JL Pet Products Pate. Some of your dogs dry food if they're quite foody. I don't mind. Um, are you just going to feed them less later? Just gonna, honestly, you've all seen my whippets. They're not, they're not fat whippets. Um, I usually get commented quite to the opposite. Um, we do loads of training. I literally, I got a whole handful, like bag full of food on my walks at the minute with a puppy. <laughs> it's tiring sometimes and it's a lot of food, but he's learning to make good choices. And when he's too excited, find it, find it, find it. Because when it goes wrong, it can feel like the end of the world to us. It can feel like, what did we do wrong? What happened? It's so annoying. It's like a most split second in, in your dog's life. They, they, they are not overthinking it. That's why dogs are happy. <laughs> That's why dogs are really happy loads of the time. They don't overthink things. Um, so although it feels like the end of the world, <sighs> take a deep breath. You probably go home and feel that stress. I've been there. You just go home after chucking loads of food down and you sit and relax. Um, so what sort of treats do I use on my walk with Arkel? So uh, when I'm taking Arkel out, he's a bit of a fussy dog. Um, so I use JR Pet Products Pate, which is like a long um, sausage of pure meat. It's either like salmon or beef or lamb. Um, it comes in a sausage and I can cut it up into the size I want. I think I started it off with quite big pieces because he didn't take much food um, and I wanted him to enjoy it. Now we're getting down to like barely visible pieces. So he's not getting like huge treats at the minute. He's getting like, I couldn't even begin to show you that that's small. <laughs> he gets some of that. He gets a uh, fresh, uh, like cooked fresh chicken that I've cut up into tiny pieces. He loves cheese. Um, so he gets lots of tiny pieces of cheese. You do have to be careful with your own dogs. Some dogs will not tolerate cheese. Arthur never tolerated cheese. Went through him, it wasn't good. Arkel's fine with cheese. We use, we use squeezy cheese as well. Um, in a tube that I can easily dispense for lead walking sometimes or just for calming. We use tiny bits of cocktail sausage, tiny bits of hot dog. I think we've been using slices of beef cut, cut up into tiny pieces. I just use whatever whatever he likes. Um, and as long as it's you know safe and healthy for him, you know, you can always Google or you can ask me sometime. I'll try and check it out. I can't promise I know from the top of my head. Um, but I want it to be soft and smelly basically. I want it to be really easy to eat because I do use a lot of food. So, you know, we were passing um, some dogs across the road earlier with Arkel and he was getting treat after treat after treat after treat for walking nicely next to me. Um, and I want him to be able to swallow him because it only needs to be a taste of something. And then we're on to the next and then eat that onto the next. I definitely with him take out some bigger treats too. He tends to quite like crunchy treats, so they're his sort of extra special treats um, because they do take him some time. I think he has like the little Wainwrights training treat bones. Someone might know what I'm talking about. Um, I take out those and then I've got like deer jerky, which I got from somewhere, which he's obsessed with. Um, and sometimes even cheapo treats he's quite happy with. I just don't give him too many because they fill him up quite fast. Um, but thank you for your question because it's always good to have questions um so yeah when it goes wrong um it is not the end of the world um it will feel like a <laughs> i've definitely gone home sometimes i mean most of you know some of you have been in my um online classes since having our call i've come home like that was the worst walk in the world and i'm like really i've been really upset <laughs> i've never been that upset with my reactive dogs but my excited him being quite excited i found quite difficult to start with um but He's doing great now because I'm rewarding good choices. We're definitely going on more purposeless walks and I'm making sure that it's an, I don't get frustrated when it's frustrating because he he's the kind of dog that picks up on that. When you have a, you know, which a lot of you will have, I can see some of you up there. Um, I'm pointing up with so, so that means anything. Um, <laughs> because I know a lot of you have really good relationships with your dogs. Sometimes the flip side of that is they can read you really well and you're frustrated they know it. <laughs> and they're like, uh oh, what have I done wrong? You're frustrated. Should I be frustrated? And some dogs don't know how to handle that. Um, so sometimes it's about just hiding your emotions until you get home and taking deep breaths. And it gets easier with practice. But it's just information when it goes wrong. It's either information we push too hard or it's just life. Life happens. It doesn't just happen with dogs. It happens all the time, especially in my life. <laughs> um, so. I think one of you had a question for me earlier. 
um, in the group, which I'm going to answer um, if I remember it correctly, because I, I don't know if you're here now or not, um, and you can correct me if I've got it wrong, but I think someone said that um, they have a dog who usually recalls quite well, but when they are in a group of dogs, um, it becomes more difficult to recall them. And if you're here, tell me if that sounds about right, um, or if I've just invented it. But I've just invented it, I'm going to talk through it anyway. Um, but if if you have a dog that is usually quite good at recall, the thumbs up are looking good. If you have a dog who's quite good at recall usually, but they struggle in the presence of multiple distractions. It's quite interesting because what's going on is that, that's right, okay, that's good. <laughs> um, it's, it's almost a form of uh, like a trigger stacking, almost, almost, where like they could handle one dog, they could probably handle another dog, but you know, stack all those dogs up together, the recall kind of hasn't, isn't quite there yet with all of those distractions. So what does it tell me? It tells me I probably want to work on um, games for disengagement, um, which I, we've done a lot more of recently in like in like group sessions, which I can send you some information on, um, Sarah. Um, but disengagement games are my favourite, and they're kind of like the self control with food in your hand, or food on the floor, or with toys, and it's teaching our dogs that they can naturally disengage from a distraction. Um, but we also probably want to be practicing our recall um, when, in a controlled way around distractions, like in a really controlled way, um, so that we can start to proof it for life. Um, maybe in those situations, if that were me, I and I had a mo moderately toy motivated dog, or a tiny bit of a toy motivated dog. I, I, can't quite recall if she is or not. Um, maybe that would be the only occasion I use the super special toy um, around super, super level distractions. Recall, have my, I'm not going to my box, it'll wake my puppy up. <laughs> One of my many hundreds of tuggy toys I've now got. Now we recall, get the toy out and pull it across the floor because that's gonna get them quite excited. Though potentially in a group of dogs, maybe I wouldn't use such an exciting toy that moves along the floor thinking about it. Maybe just one that's in my pocket that my dog can grab hold of and we can play with. Um, you could tell I, I was thinking sight hounds as I went there. I'm like, oh, group of sight hounds chasing something across the floor. Might not end spectacularly. Maybe not them. Um, but it's just a sign that maybe we need to practice that recall around distractions. Can we practice it from a, a distracting... Thing in the garden or can we set up a distraction on walks if there's two of us going for a walk yeah it's like I've done a long fluffy thing some of you someone's just laugh react it's not a good idea um any dog too fair it's not a long fluffy thing I just made me think of whippets funnily enough um but um if there are two people on my walk um that regularly are on the walk with the dog then maybe I would practice it so that you try recalling them past a distraction using a long line um to start with so they don't self-reinforce but maybe I want to be thinking about how can I um, practice. So yeah, I mean, you could use a, a different noise or a whistle, but I probably, um, I probably, you know, I, I use I use a whistle only for emergencies um, rather than really exciting situations. Uh, if I felt it was quite urgent, maybe I would use the whistle. But the way that I train. Uh, with my dogs, I want them to know what I want from them rather than just distracting them like in the moment because I want them to be able to do it under any sort of stimulus, uh, any sort of distraction going on. So maybe in that instance, I would also use movement, which I think we've done in some of our classes. So I would call them, maybe act like I'm leaving um, and like maybe run a bit. I know you all get a bit more <laughs> bored of me suggesting running and I'm a bit bored of running, um, but I would maybe call them run a bit because your dog's going to start to um, see your movement and remember that the reason that dogs find each other very exciting is that movement is exciting. Dogs move, dogs are unpredictable. As humans we're a bit boring, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not a personal thing to anyone, we're really boring to dogs in comparison. We stand and we watch them play. Um, I, I'm realising I'm rambling quite a lot so I don't know if I've answered your question Sarah. Um, but yeah maybe it's a sign we need to just practice more around distractions in a controlled way as well as like in the moment maybe having a super high value reward for them even just uh, checking in. Hello Nicola. Yes yeah I'll make sure it's um, onto the recorded onto the page and I'll share it in the group as well. Um, at least Arkle's behaving now. He wasn't earlier. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I answered your question, Sarah, so I would try and practice that recall around distractions. I would practice having a super high value reward for recall um, in a distractible situation. I would think about using a movement. Um, 
Lenny can hear your voice and is wondering where the treats are and when the training is starting. Oh, I miss my online classes with Lenny and in person, but obviously I've recently seen him online. Um, <laughs> I think someone said to me the other day, uh, we were doing something like this and they said, oh, my dog falls asleep at the sound of your voice. This is amazing. I said, wow. Can be of some help. Uh, maybe you can record the sound of my voice. <laughs> maybe that'll help. Um, I'm off on a complete tangent now. Sarah says I think. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll come back to it because I'm getting distractible. I am like the whippets. What can you do to a hu increase like a human's uh, level of um, focus? <laughs> That's what I need to learn, clearly. Um, so we'll try it. She definitely disengages. Yeah, so, um, I pro so we definitely want her to um, disengage from the other dogs. Anytime she even glances at you in the presence of other dogs, I think I would mark and reward her, um, even if it's just you throwing a treat away for her to chase. Um, I, I, it's one of those things that does come with time, um, but I would also, yeah, use movement, utilize all of your skills, all of them that you've got, um, and maybe have a go at like, um, I'll try and pop some disengagement games in the group. So if you're in the Wagon Wonders group or the Whippet Wonders group, I will, uh, I will pop some, uh, I'll pop the can I have your attention please game in there um, because I think that one's a really good one for teaching uh, disengagement as a concept. Um, uh, someone else came up, do you teach disengagement using treats? Um, yes, yeah, I mean unfortunately I use a lot of food. <laughs> um, I could, I absolutely can use toys um, and I do use toys quite a lot with Arkle specifically because he quite likes toys. But yeah, I use food, so it definitely requires dogs to be a little bit foodie. If they're not foodie, we can always make them more foodie. So I think I'll pop at least one or two things in some groups um, later. Um, and I'll try and get some stuff on the main page too. Um, so, I think I might have answered that question. I need something to keep me focused, um, because I obviously not very good at it on these. <laughs> so I'll, re I'll start to um, recap some of the stuff I've said. If anyone has any more questions, let me know and I'm gonna post some stuff as well. But we've been talking about your party animal dogs as briefly as I can, because last time I was here for an hour and I think everyone got really bored. <laughs> it won't be an hour today. Um, recap is we want our party animal dogs to know that they, when they make good choices, we are gonna reward them for good choices. Those good choices need to be in all environments, not just around the distractions. We don't wanna just use that food around distractions. But when we are around distractions, we wanna reward as many good choices as we can, which might mean that people are looking at us going, why are we shoveling food into our dogs so often? I'd rather that, because later <laughs> I'm gonna have the dog that's nice and focused. Um, and it's a little bit of that um, from Sarah as well. I would be I would be rewarding good choices around distractions in general. So don't just, um, we don't always wanna just be waiting for the situation that they struggle. We wanna be thinking life, 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 life all the time. Um, so we wanna reward good choices. We want to potentially go on purposeless walks uh, where we go and we don't always just do something. Sometimes we go and we watch things and our dog has a licky mat or our dog has a chew or maybe we're even just out in the car and nothing exciting happens and we go home because it helps reduce that Disneyland effect of walks. Um, and I think everyone could do with doing that a bit more, me, me included. <laughs> it's not an only one sort of thing. Um, and what do we do when it goes wrong? <sighs> we take deep breaths, like I did those you saw Arkle earlier, like I did there. Put a big fake smile on my face. I'm like, oh Arkle, really? Um, those are not the words going through my head, I can promise you, but we're gonna pretend it's not that bad. We're gonna handle the situation. If we're in real life, we might do a U-turn, we might walk away, and then we might scatter feed until our dogs are calm again, and then restart our walk. Um, but it's never a big deal, and dogs don't know right from wrong. Just always remember that. Don't listen to people on TV. <laughs> I'm just saying, don't listen to those bad people on TV who are pretending they know about dogs. Dogs do not know right from wrong. Um, they would be probably taking over the world if they could think that, that extensively. I know Wombo, my Jarosaur would have. If he could think like that, there'd be no chance. <laughs> there'd be no chance for the rest of us. So, does anyone have any more questions? Um, anyone has any questions, you can comment. Um, I hope it has been a, a little bit helpful. Um, I will post some links in groups. I will post uh, some bits and bobs. 
Um, I am also going to be uh, posting again because I'm being a bit cheeky. Uh, it's not cheeky, I'm just trying to be helping a friend whose dog's really ill. I'm going to post another GoFundMe thing if you could share it. That would be super appreciated. Her dog is incredibly ill. Um, and just sharing sharing her page would be super helpful. He's so, so, so ill. Um, and, you know, it's... it's uh, even sharing if you can't donate, if you can donate just a tiny bit, um, it means that he can have some more tests. Um, I'm not going to blabber on too much, I'll pop a link up, um, but I just thought I'd mention that. Um, otherwise, I'm seeing if you've got any questions. Sometimes I go right by and someone's question pops up and I go, oh no, um, I missed out, <laughs> I missed out. Um, so I am just seeing, and if, uh, so I am back to normal in person, one-to-ones and classes um, from here on in. So if you have any inquiries, probably email me because the Facebook page is naff. Um, email me waggingwonderslincoln at gmail.com um, and we will see what we can help you with. Um, but otherwise, I didn't go too far over 30 minutes. I've not bored you all to tears. I'm hoping um, I will do some more lives of these. As I've said before, give me some ideas. You can see I can talk. You can't shut me up apparently. Um, I'm gonna let you all go. If you have any questions, give me a shout. I will pop those things in various places at some point this evening, because I think I've got a class soon. Um, but otherwise, enjoy your evenings, and let me know how you get on. Bye!